All right, guys, we're going to continue on. As we kind of blasted through this, one thing that was different about the twin cam, too, is it just uses an O-ring on the bottom, not a base gasket. So those are new, back in, uh, back in shape there. There were some O-rings on some dowel pins. We've talked about that plenty of times. You never reuse that. I'm going to revisit head gaskets here from an evolution video, an old one we did a couple years ago, because I think this is, this is really important. Uh, Harley-Davidson... Uh, as well as other people have experimented with different gasket materials, makeups, how they secure them, the dowel pins, or everything. But the thing I want to start off with first, common for Harley Davidson to have an O-ring around those dowel pins and then the gasket, that's of course the right gasket here, this is for an Evo, but look at the dowel pin arrangement. You can see that it needed that O-ring and the gasket to do the job it was intended or designed to do. Does that make sense? Yep. So when you get, this is another reason I love OEM Harley parts. For the record, I love aftermarket parts sometimes as well. But I just want you to think about the fact that if you do put aftermarket parts in, you got to read the instructions they come with. People take gaskets for granted. It's just one of those things. Don't overlook the little details. So when you get your new head gaskets, they're in a package like so, do not use with O-rings. Okay, so it's it's a it's an update, if you will. And this is kind of stuff you're not going to find that in a service manual, are you? If you go to parts fish, what's the parts fish going to show you is required here? O-rings. O-rings, okay? So uh, I, I revis or I'm revisiting that from an older evolution video, but it is important and worth measuring here. You can see where the part number is facing up towards you, and that would be the correct installation. I'm going to go ahead here and uh, move forward with uh, cylinder head installation. There's the front on our cylinder heads. They matter front to rear. You're going to see me just duplicate the process here, but we're really going to get into Harley-Davidson head torque and, and what that looks like. We've got four fasteners, okay, we've got some short ones and some long ones. Alright guys, just per the Harley-Davidson service manual, they want us to take oil, okay, and you've seen this from some of our other videos too, uh, about torque, and they want just a, you don't fill this cavity, we want just a very, very light amount of oil in across this bolt. It also says in the manual to wipe off the excess. Like I said, they don't want a ton on there, but I want to explain what's going on here. So if we have oil on here, a little bit of oil on the threads, okay, so that's a pretty nicely machined surface, isn't it? Yep. And so is this faster. So like I said, that oil allows the, the bolt to roll across there. All right, so I'll go ahead and do that to all of them. I can't stress this enough. If you do not understand or comprehend the torque process of fasteners, Make sure you educate yourself. This procedure should only be used in this case. I'm going to go ahead here. Looks like this one down. Okay. Okay. So well, we're going to go ahead and go through the process. Check out the summary at the end of this video and I'll explain more why I stated this is step two when the service manual states it is step one. 120 to 142, wasn't it? We've talked about this before too. You can use extensions this way, but you cannot use an extension that goes outward or backwards. If you have to use something like that, because like let's say you're trying to get in here and you can't get to this faster, you want to use a crow's foot, you need to set it at 90 degrees. Watch our uh, faster playlist for more info on that. 17. So now you have to set the tool down here on this one, this way snap one was, and I want to go to that degree sign, and that's going to calibrate itself. That's what this little pad's for. So you want to set this on a level surface like that. We take and we make a mark here. After I tighten this, this doesn't move. When I tighten that bolt, that should line up there, and this represents that 90 degrees between there. Okay, so we're going to do that on all the fasteners. It's a way to kind of double check. If you didn't have a, a digital torque wrench like this, that's what you do for final torque. So you can use your regular old half inch breaker bar at this point and you move that 90 degrees, it's done and good to go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of the tool. Now I want to talk about this here about comfort. 
you can see here where this can't, it won't let me have a perfect 90 here, okay, just from the way it ratchets. But I don't care anyway because if I start here, okay, I know that I need to go 90 degrees. That means the torque wrench is going to end up here. Do you see how awkward that is? I'm going to pull it into myself. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and since I have it marked, none of this matters. I'm just going to go up here so that I can pull this over. Now with this tool, it's going to vibrate. Yeah, it's going to tell me to stop. It's going to let me know where I'm at. And then I can back it up with my paint marks that I put on there. So I'm going to go ahead, good even pressure and if doing one shot. As I wrap this video up, I want you to think about a couple things here. First off, every single torque procedure and every single service manual expects that you have an understanding that the first step is always to kiss the fasteners. Can't stress that enough. And the last thing is simply just know that you can own your workspace and get comfortable. Make things easier for yourself, not harder. Make it great and keep wrenching.